Welcome, Manon. my name is Tavis, and today we are painting something special. Well, we always paint something special, but today we are painting in an archer. A ultramarine blue archer. Jamie Wolf's archer. Now, I have to say, personally, I actually always thought his mech was painted like everyone else's, but turns out it is based on his um, clan livery, and it is blue with yellow stripes. Didn't know that. Know that now. So yeah, for this model I wanted a combination of a strong clan look, which is for me means clean colors. But I also wanted to show that this is a guy who is not afraid to be up front, running in a campaign from the front line. So, I started off by painting it black, uh, also because I painted all the uh, Wolf Dragoons black. And then I hit it now with ultramarine blue and make sure to paint only the panels in that so far that's possible, leaving shadows because this will give the sensation of the mech being well worn mid campaign, so to speak. And um, this is one of these things you just have to take your time to do, especially on a mech like the Archer that has a lot of panels. Just focus on what you're supposed to be doing, take it slow. It also helps you have a fairly wet paint. Now, the way I go about this is I go a quick layer first, applying a slightly thinner paint to mark out the areas where I want the paint to go and make a sort of undercoat layer because it's easier to paint over that if I should mock it up somehow. So you water down paint a bit and then apply it quickly because if you think too much, you're going to get into your own head. So, quick paint. And then you just pick out the panels. And if you feel that it went wrong somewhere, you just let the paint dry a bit and go over to the black again. That's why you have the base coat. It's the correct mistakes at this stage. Not later, immediately. Now, the images I've seen online of the actual canonic color scheme is a bit more powdery blue than the uh, ultramarine blue, but that was the closest I had at hand. So what we have to do for this? We're going to spice it up a bit later, but for now we just apply a base coat of ultramarine blue. And when you're doing one of these very canonical paint schemes, it does actually give you a bit, of, a bit of a benefit if you have a few reference pictures ready. I had one sitting on my computer screen together with a few other mm, more or less unofficial paint schemes from um, different unit databases just to get a good look of it. But as you can see here, I'm not overly careful when applying this first base layer because as I said, it is mostly a way to apply where I'm going to be painting. Once that is done, we're going to go over it another time, but that is just to smoothen everything out. And this step is the most time consuming one because it's the most just flat, covering flat surfaces because you can't just throw it on because if you throw it on, it's going to go meh. I mean, you guess in theory could do this with uh, contrast paints too. If you give it a white base coat and then find a nice contrast paint you like. You just give it a good slap of that. But if you don't have contrast contrast paints contrast paints, or if you don't feel like that is your medium, the way to do it is to say thin it down a bit, give it a quick once over. Not runny runny, because you don't want it to run into the uh, uh, between the panels and destroy all the shadow work. But wetter. A bit wetter is better. It's, it's okay if it isn't entirely covering, because we're going to go with one more time, as I mentioned. So, yeah. just lay it down with confidence. I was also thinking of if I was going to close the lids on this one, the can, the can lids for the missile, but I decided to not do that. So, I let this dry. And then off camera, I went over it one more time, just painting all of the panels another time, making sure they all 
look clean and uh, coherent. Then mixed up some Viking blue into the ultramarine blue to give it a lighter tone, a bit more pop. And um, this was then applied to all the panels again that I wanted to. I want to give some of the panels a sensation of hitting, having sunlight hitting them or some light hitting them. So we don't paint all the panels with this mix, but those that are where we feel the light should be hitting. So not that much in between the legs, not under the arms, nor under the chest, but exterior panels where you think light will be hitting. Just to give the sensation that this is actually good paint under there. But still I said, leaving it a bit worn and ragged in the shadows. This is an easy technique and especially easy on uh, machines because you don't need to care about Oh god, I can't remember the name for it. Oh, it's a specularity. No. Anyway, the thing that happens when sunlight hits your skin and it penetrates part of the skin and gives it very weird depth field. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. It's paint. It bounces right off. But these are some things you think about. That's why skin always takes a lot longer to paint because you need to mix yellows and blues and reds and different layers to get a realistic looking skin. With metal, not so much. You just figure out where the sun is hitting and then you paint a brighter shade onto that and that is going to let the brain do its thing and mostly cover all the oddness. Now, beyond that, we hit it with some metal because we, we, the original image had some metal. So we're like, all right, let's give it some metal. Using basic gun metal for this because why not? It is a very nice basic one. And here I'm using a sort of older paint swatch. Been sitting on my wet palette for a while and getting fairly diluted because you don't need much silver. You don't want it to be bright popping silver. You just want to to read as metal, bare metal or silver painted metal, nothing more than that. I mean, and of course we hit the weapons with silver too because that is what we do here. There, it is not a tab production if it does not have silvered weapons, because you know it is what it is. Now I could talk a bit about Jamie Wolf, the character, but there's so much to dig through there, and I don't want to spoil it for people who want. To avoid spoilers, so I'm not gonna talk much about the character, but I recommend that you actually go out and look up look his story up because it's a really interesting one. Anyway, as I mentioned before, we need yellow lines, and I come to find I come to find what is the English, not mine apparently. I have found that basilisk brown make for a great base for yellow. It is a sort of hemp rope ish. Beast or brownish brown color. It's more yellow than brown. You could also say it is a yeah poop color. But for instance, the purpose is a fairly nice yellow base. And um, as you all know, yellow needs a good base. You could say that with yellow, it is all about the base, but the base. No trouble. Yeah, all about the base. So, again, I look at the design on the official image and try to replicate that on my own. It goes so and so, I can tell. Uh, especially, I didn't like the top design, the so W thing he has there, but we're gonna fix that off camera later at a later date. For now, it's okay. Again, sometimes things don't have to be perfect. Now, once I'm done with the basilisk brown, lie down all the base layers I wanted. I hit it with some Phoenix Flames just to give it a more pop because yellow is yellow and yellow is evil. Phoenix Flames is a warm reddish yellow it's almost on the orange scale and I think it works fairly well for what it is. Now with that said all that was left was to paint the cockpit in my standard golden design and the make was done. I also painted the the symbol, the Merc symbol, but we don't talk about that one. It looks like crap. It's gonna be redone. 
So, I'm now going to turn you over to some uh, turntable shots and until next time, stay safe, be kind and do, do play fair. Bye.